Welcome back. She's been called one of the greatest singer-songwriters in history with her 90s debut album, Pieces of You, going platinum 12 times, selling over 30 million albums with hits like Who Will Save Your Soul. Every time I hear it to this day, it touches me. And You Were Meant For Me, garnering four Grammy nominations in her 30-year career. We know her by one name, Jewel. And in a daytime exclusive... <laughs> She is here today sharing with the Tam fam the hidden struggle her fans didn't see, all with the hope of helping others. Fresh off of her phenomenal rendition of the national anthem at the NBA All-Star Game last week, please welcome to the Tam fam music superstar, Jewel! It's so many things to talk about. I've got to start with the national anthem at the NBA All-Star Game. What a performance. Look at you. <laughs> that rendition was gorgeous, as always. And I'm still so struck by your anxiety, which you've been open about, and even debilitating agoraphobia at one point in your life. And there you are standing there. How do you, how do you balance that part of your reality with this part of your reality? <laughs> you know, I moved out when I was 15. I was raised in an abusive household, and so I just sort of felt like I could live in a cabin with a guy that wasn't nice to me, or I could just go live in a cabin. So I opted for that. But I knew that statistically, kids like me that move out at such a young age um, don't do well. So I know statistically I should have ended up in a cycle of abuse or in a cycle of addiction. And so I didn't let myself move out unless I felt like I had some kind of reasonable plan that could help me not be a statistic. And as I looked at it, I realized as much as I had a genetic inheritance that might give me a predisposition to diabetes or heart disease, I had an emotional inheritance that would give me a predisposition to abuse and addiction. Which you've talked about over your career. I yeah. mean, obviously, like everyone else, I fell in love with your music and then you start to give these revealing interviews very early on. When you look back at that young woman who made that bold decision, when people weren't talking about mental health, mm -mm. people weren't telling their stories like you were at that time. When you look back, what made her so brave? Because you're trying to be a music star, and then you turn into an icon for the voice of those who don't speak up about mental health. Yeah, you know, I ended up homeless because I wouldn't have sex with a boss and I didn't want to be leveraged. And so I started living in my car. Then that's how I became homeless. And when I got discovered, it was by accident. I wasn't trying to get discovered, but I almost didn't sign the deal because, again, I knew statistically you take somebody with my background and, God forbid, I get famous. That's a recipe for every movie you've seen about every celebrity. Meaning that the background would have had you spiraled, as you yeah. pointed out, into addiction and yeah. all of these things that... So I made it my number one job to be a happy whole human, not a human full of holes. What does that mean for you? It meant that I realized I lacked an education in what it took to be happy, and I wanted to understand if happiness was a learnable skill. And what happened to kids like me? If you move out without a safety net, without any money for therapy, without a family system, yeah. does it mean I don't get to be happy? Does it mean I don't have access to happiness? And so that's what I started to set out to learn and began to discover tools for myself that I just invented. And then they got validated shockingly by a neuroscientist years later. You talk about, in a, a Forbes interview uh, in 2016, you said, I believe the heart of every singer-songwriter has been touched by pain and struggle. And this, in turn, forced the heart to cultivate deep empathy and insight, not only into the poetry and beauty of their own suffering, but for the suffering of those around them. You started to empathize more. I just always felt that it was odd that we didn't get taught what to do with pain. I was raised bar singing. I saw people using drugs, mm -hmm. alcohol, rage to handle pain. I knew I was in pain, and why aren't we taught what to do with pain? And so for me, music helped me synthesize mm -hmm. pain, but the tools I developed are what really helped. And to me, it just started to feel, you know, really unjust that you know, misery is an equal opportunist. It yes. doesn't care if you're rich yeah. or poor yeah. or homeless or married. <laughs> but if you're going to learn a new way of being, that's learning a skill and that takes education and education takes money and suddenly happiness is an elitist proposition. That isn't right. 
So for me, it's been about how do I scale solutions that make these tools accessible to everybody? Because we all have the right to be happy and it shouldn't be something you only get if you can afford it. We talk about healthcare and that it should be available for everyone, and absolutely it should be. But you also talk about accessibility of mental health support yeah. and how that's defined. Yeah, and we're finally seeing real yeah. studies that link the connection of our happiness, depression, and anxiety on our physical health and the types of inflammation and heart disease. Yeah. So we're starting to see, and I know payers are starting to see, that if we start to create real solutions. The problem is mindfulness has become this buzzword, yeah. you know, it was on the cover of Time, which is great, but we don't really know what it means, you know, like to me it just means being consciously present. So that's great, meditation helps you learn to be consciously present, but now what? How do I make my life better? Yeah. Because now that I'm present, I don't actually like how I feel. I don't actually like what I'm yeah, doing. Now that I'm here, yeah. what do I do? Now yeah. what? And so that's what, you know, I've been working on is like, now what? So in my youth foundation for 21 years, we've worked with kids with suicidal ideation, all without therapy, and all it's like, now what? I need behavioral tools to make my life better. We're gonna talk more about those tools that I think everybody could benefit from. Jewel continues our conversation after the break and she's inviting us into the new inner world and showing us how it can help with depression and anxiety right after the break. Hi everybody, I am Jewel. Some of you may or may not know I actually have a really long history in the mindfulness field and so I set off on this journey by myself to really become very focused on if happiness was a learnable skill and was it a teachable skill. That is fascinating. That was actually singer-songwriter Jewel inside a new virtual reality platform. It's called Inner World, which she co-founded. Inner World is an app for the metaverse. So right from your phone, laptop, or tablet, you are virtual and with an anonymous avatar, and you can walk around, attend group sessions, meet other people anonymously, and also learn coping strategies for anxiety and depression. For people who don't fully understand the metaverse, how do you explain it, especially how you've entered it? Yeah, this is just like a video game. So if you guys have ever played a video game, that's basically as simple as it is. It can be just like if you're on a video game, you can do it on a TV screen. Or if you want to put the goggles on and be three-dimensional and immersive, you can do that too. It's as easy as using Zoom. It's not hard. It's as easy as using Zoom. And today we have a Tamron Hall show first. We have a guest actually joining us from Inner World Metaverse as their avatar, Moon Goddess 66. She says the platform helped her overcome her agoraphobia, something we talked about with Jewel, and she's now working with the world of inner world uh, to help others. All right, so they tell me, and now this is an actual person. Live. This is her avatar. She is live, and let's see. I'm gonna hold it down to talk to her. Moon Goddess, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. This provides you with anonymity so that you can freely talk about your struggles. How liberating was that? It, it allowed me to step out of the shadows and become myself again. It allowed you to step, this is fascinating. You, you know, and I know, that as technology um, continues to advance, and hopefully it will always do that, there's an intimidation factor. Yeah. So for people who are seeing this now, and they're like, wait a minute, Tamron Hall, this is like a movie. <laughs> I, will be, I will lose myself in this. How do you explain why this is such a valuable tool to make their to make this accessible to people. Yeah, accessibility is the key. Right now, if everybody were to seek mental health care that really wanted it, we'd need an additional five million therapists in our country. Right now, we're already almost 500,000 therapists short as it is. So it's really difficult for people to find the mental health care they need. Whereas this is an actual genuinely scalable solution because anybody can come on, basically log on to this platform, which is as easy as using Zoom, and you can learn real skills. So if you come in, you know, one of the skills Moon Goddess probably learned uh, for social anxiety and agoraphobia is a skill where you say, what's the worst case scenario right. if you go to the grocery store? And so you say what your worst fear is, and then you make a plan. Moon Goddess is listening to us, right? She's nodding. Yeah. And so this is her, her body and waving. <laughs> oh, she, oh, and Moon Goddess, I know you want to say something to Jewel. What I'd like to say to you, Jewel, is that you bringing this platform to the world right now, uh, you're going to change the world as we know it at a time when we need it the most. And I thank you for that. Uh, 
we want to mention that this technology is new. Experts are still working to understand if it helps people struggling with mental health issues. And of course, if anyone is experiencing mental health issues, they should first consult with a doctor. Free confidential help is available 24 hours, seven days a week, calling and texting 988 suicide and crisis lifeline. The lifeline will connect you with a trained counselor, anyone experiencing suicide, substance use, or other mental challenges. You can also go to 988lifeline.org. This is absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much. I, I, I'm blown away by this. <laughs> Thank you, Moon Goddess, and thank you, Jewel. You're very welcome. You can actually go to TamronHallShow.com for a link to Inner World or access it through the app. It is free to join. But guess what? Everybody in the audience today, you're getting an upgraded membership for a year from Jewel. <laughs> oh, my God. Before I let you go, as I understood, we have an avatar of myself in the metaverse. Yeah. Do we have that? There yeah. I am. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> the Tamron Hall show is in the metaverse. Thank you, Jewel. You gave me a gift there. Well, you've given us all a gift. And thank you so much thank for the generosity to our audience.